10% saving on cycle time. That's the difference between having to buy another machine or not. Connor, injection molding from Sodic and Soditec. Tell us about this machine that you've got on show here from uh, Mac 2024. Uh, yes, indeed. So Sodic have been in injection molding uh, for quite a while, but recently we brought these machines into Europe. So this is a 30 ton GL uh, hybrid hydraulic machine uh, featuring the, the well-known uh, Sodic V-Line injection system. Uh, and that's a key part, isn't it, of this machine? All, all Sodic machines are V-Line. Uh, you probably can't see this image here, but in V-Line, a conventional machine uh, prepares the material, meters the material and injects the material all on a single screw and barrel. What we've done in Sodic is decouple those two processes of melt preparation and injection for a selection of reasons. The primary reason for decoupling is to improve shot-to-shot -shot consistency. Uh, one of the biggest challenges in plastics is maintaining the same amount of plastic, pressure in plastic, and speed of plastic going into the cavity from uh, large shots all the way down to micro shot sizes. And many times, the smaller the shot, the more difficult that is to control. But with the V-Line system, we've maintained quality all the way down to very short, small shot sizes. So this appears to be a really important part of the injection molding process then, probably one of the key areas. Very much, yes. Um, when, when you get into, when you're in bigger parts in the nature of, of plastics, the bigger, heavier parts, you can get variation that doesn't hurt you so much. But as you get down into the micro scale, or even on bigger parts when you're getting into tighter and tighter tolerances, variations in cavity pressure hugely influence your ability to control dimensions and part quality. So in the, in the micro scale, you get large and small parts. And as that variation increases, you get flash and short shots in the extremes. So the ability to control cavity pressure and delivery speed, very important. Um, this is an electric, well, it's a hybrid machine, isn't it? People say to me all the time, you've got to go electric, it's got to be electric, but you're kind of in the middle with it. Yeah, electric, I, I'm going to be bold and say electric was a fashion. And the fashion came in was back 20, 25 years ago, hydraulic machines were hugely inefficient. And the new electric machines were hugely efficient by comparison. But in truth, the baby got thrown out of the bathwater because some of the virtues of hydraulic uh, are still virtuous today. So in hydraulics, we use them for small amounts of high pressure movement, which they're very good at. In the electric field, so the, the, if you look at this opening stroke, the low pressure opening strokes, we use electric screw motors. Low energy does the job perfectly. But for the clamp force, we use hydraulic, where it's most efficient. On the injection side, we still use hydraulic for the injection because it's not possible to deliver that huge thump of immediate energy using electric. You can, but the machine life is shortened. It's much more efficient to use hydraulic. So this is just a clever mix of hydraulic and electric. Like speed though as well. I mean, is that important on a machine like this? How quick you're doing things? And when you're battling in production, you're looking at somebody who wants to run a 3.9 second cycle and they're giving out because it's 3.95. And you say, well, I can promise you 3.85. Speed is hugely important. When you're talking about 10% uh, saving on cycle time, that's the difference between having to buy another machine or not. It's the difference between running to the max capacity of the machine. That's on the production side in terms of opening and closing. In terms of the injection side and speed, maintaining injection speed is critical to maintaining uh, the viscosity of the polymer and then on through to repeatability and part quality. Now your range here, we're looking at the GL30ALP, but you have other models. Yes, so the 30 tons denotes the clamp force. And then the other denotion is the the size of the injection unit here, we have a 12, meter pl 12 millimeter plunger and a 14 millimeter screw. We go all the way up to 250 tons in this range and all the way up to 50 millimeter plunger, 50 millimeter screw. So there's a huge range of machines depending on the application. Generally speaking in plastics, your first consideration is the physical size of the part for clamp force calculation, because ultimately the plastic is like hydraulic, trying to blow the mold apart. And your second consideration is the amount of shot size you require. Again, the benefit of decoupling the injection and metering process is we can decide to use a smaller metering section where you're in very fast cycling, so as we don't have residence time issues, or a larger feed section. So we can mix and match to really optimize uh, material residence time, heat up periods, and injection speeds. Uh, very, very impressive. I mean, I've also just slightly look, well, looked at this interface. I mean, yeah. this, it might look aesthetically pleasing, but it's actually clearly the control of the machine is very it, it is functional it is functional so i just this one page here um again it's a personal feeling of mine as a process engineer a lot of machines are coming out with you know it's a bit like a, 
a certain song I heard, 99 channels and nothing on. Lots and lots of pages, lots of information, and you're constantly dancing between pages to get what you want. One page controls pretty much everything you need to see. Yes, of course, we can dial into the individuals, but in two pages there, I have everything I need to do and everything the machine is doing. So it, it's a very simplistic, easy to use interface. Um, I found that often with people coming to use it, within an hour or two, they're quite comfortable with the machine. It's not mysterious. I'm not digging around looking for pages and information. Um, some people want complexity. That's not really the way this machine is about. We're into making good parts, not making complex parts.